Salutations, humans! So ever since my first video, well, are you happy now, humans? Because I sure am. The years taken off my life from pain fumes was 10 billion percent worth it. Alrighty, humans, so step one is I'm gonna cheat or not really cheat, that's for you to decide. I'm gonna use my Nezuko Haori, but not the brown one that I still haven't ironed after over a year. This pink one that I spent like 1.5 years thinking about until I finally decided to get it and it turns out it was completely worth it. I wear it almost every day and I love it so gosh, did they darn much. If you don't have something similar, not to worry, just find a loose or big long sleeve thing you can trace since we're modifying it anyway. The cool thing about this is that it's meant to be big and loose so I can use it to hide all my failures and insecurities behind a pretty butterfly thing. Anyway, here you see me using pattern paper. You can just use anything like tape a bunch of newspaper together or print out all your failed schoolwork and tape it together because eventually the text will become so small you won't remember your failure. Just kidding, printing is expensive. Only use your already printed failed schoolwork. Um, then I picked up the haori then put it back. I traced the sleeve hole part as you can see then I extended it up. Then I'm trying to shape it down like her butterfly shape so I traced it then added a whoop. You know, a whoop. So it's gonna look butterfly-y. Then I had to stop filming because I wanted to check the pictures again, and now we're back with this pattern looking like that Da Vinci symmetry thing. Da Vinci? <laughs> Anyway, start chop chopping that pattern and well would you look at that, my phone fell over. The winky? Once I cut out my pattern pieces, I stared at them until I hated the shape of the sleeve so I taped it to the extra pattern paper and tried to draw draw and reshape the sleeve. Then time to chop chop again. I love chop chopping. I added extra tape to the back then when I stared at it again, it took me a bit longer time to hate the shape of the sleeve so I took that as a sign and those are my final pattern pieces. Now. Put various cloths over your arm and flop it to check the velocity and evaluate its efficiency in Demon Slay. Just kidding, I just wanted to see which one looked better when I lifted my arms. I chose this one, it's microfiber, and I chose it because my mom said she had a lot of it. So then I went home with my mom and the fabric and the pattern pieces, then I think I procrastinated to the next day because that's a different shirt. So first we're gonna make the back panel where you saw I folded the fabric in half and aligned the straight side and pinned the pattern in place using the only three pins left in my pin cushion. Where did the others go? Cut it out and remember seam allowance. Here I'm transferring the pins as I go because I only have three. And after you can unpin and unfold it and look it's symmetrical like the Davin. Now to make the front panels, to get the size right, I folded the pattern to be like like, like that. Not including the side strip, we'll deal with that later. Then same as the back panel we did, fold and align the straight side but leave a gap in the middle similar to the emotional gap between you and your- Just cut it out like before, then cut down the middle so now you have two pieces. Or just cut it out like normal, I don't know with you. Now for the sleeves, fold it in half so there's a fold there, then in half again here. Get the sleeve pattern and put it there and line up the top with the top fold and choppy chop. I actually have a fun story related to butterfly wings but it makes me kinda sad to tell it so I'll tell something adjacent where like I- no wait, I already told the story where I fell like 6 feet and didn't break anything. Oh, how about when my friends and I had a pet coconut? Anyway, now you have your two sleeve pieces and now you should have all your body part- I mean fabric pieces. Alright humans, so the last time I used a red blood cell machine- The last time I- The last time I used a sewing machine- Last time I used a sewing machine was with red blood cell, I think, if I'm not mistaken. And you know, I posted that in January, so like 5 months, that's that's okay. Uh, well, no, 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 dear human, because you see, I made red blood cell in August 2020, so that's like September, October, November, Jan September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May, so that's um 9 months since I've used the sewing machine. So let's go! We don't have a pedal. So since I was like very desperate during that time, like if I didn't at least work a little bit on this project, I would combust. So I settled in basting the stuff in place. Here's a diagram of the sewing sewing. Anyway, next day I got the pedal and started sewing. Here's the diagram again. I'm not actually sure if the thing I'm sewing here is actually the pieces I'm describing. I just need footage of me using the sewing machine. So once I've sewn these pieces together, I need to make this edge thing. So I got a ruler and cut a long strip of fabric that's double the width of how thick I want the edge to be plus seam allowance. Hey, so I stopped recording for a while because it started raining, but the rain won't stop. So if you hear rain in the background, yoinks. Cut out that long boy and now you have an Aizawa cut. No, I think I already said the same thing with Mikan in the Danganronpa video. Anyway, pin the lasagna piece right sides together to the 
the, like the, the perimeter of the neck part. You you get it, I hope. Pin, or if you're like me and only have three pins for some reason, baste it. And so that in place while watching the Butterfly Mansion episodes of Demon Slayer. Oh, I tried to remake the Butterfly Mansion in Minecraft. Should I show you later? So when you're done swing that, fold it over, then fold under again so it's a clean edge. Or just look at what I'm doing. Have I ever explained anything properly in my life? Then top stitch it in place. I'm not actually sure what a top stitch is. I just desperately need to give the illusion that I'm at least slightly credible. I use the normal stitch setting on the sewing machine. Anyway, cut off the extra and sew the sleeves like in this diagram. I love diagrams. Sew the sleeves on the main thing the way you would sew sleeves on a thing and would you look at that! You're done! Wait, but you're not done because guess who got too excited and forgot to tell you to hem the edges? Me. I got too excited, can you tell? Celebrate, eat a mango popsicle or something but don't stain your newly finished thing. What do you mean I had to learn it the hard way? So for her leg warmer thingies, take a human leg. Or if you're making this for your cat, that's really hecking cool, please send me a picture. Anyway, cut two rectangle pieces like this the size of your organism's legs plus seam allowance. Now get a piece of garter or elastic, I don't know what you call it, and use it to measure the width you need to sew for the garter hole on top and bottom of the leg warmer thing. And I think my camera died at this part so that's why you're looking at the freeze frame. Procrastinate for a week by making a katan and painting a skate than having your graduation where you and your groupmates got second highest score for thesis paper where we chose our topic because one of the groupmates likes Dr. Stone. Then your grandfather sends you a cool spinning Bluetooth speaker. Thank you, Ankung. I know you watch my videos. And then I spent that afternoon putting stickers on it and making a bunch of circles for the speaker like here's Mellow High and Chirp and Nezuko. Yeah, Nezuko, the Minecraft this. And now is for the next phase of making Shinobu. And I'd say this part is like the climax, like if Shinobu had a plot long, then it's- Oh gosh. So lay out your fabric, and sorry for the high exposure, I'll have to speak with the sun about that. I used an erasable marker to mark out where I wanted the black part to go on the edges. I think I made it 3 inches tall. Then I realized, hey, this would be a great time to use my Bluetooth speaker. So first I have to change the middle thing, of course, to match the occasion. Then I continued with marking out the black part. And after that, I marked out a bunch of dots where I wanted the pink and green ombre to be, and that was like 4 inches for pink and and 3 inches for green, but you know, you can do it with any measurement you want. I'm not the boss of you. Well, well, technically, I'm telling you what to do, which is what bosses do. But whoever put me in charge is probably not feeling well that day, you know? And now, it's time to get cooking. Just kidding, I'm bad at cooking. Look at the Bluetooth speaker. So I started mixing a bunch of textile paint together. When we were moving last year, my mom was like, Hey, Zoe, you want a bunch of textile paint I found? And me, having no idea what I'd use textile paint for, said, of course. Anyway, at least I can use it for something now. So yeah, make light pink and light green and mix it with a bunch of water and don't forget to test it on scrap fabric and let's go! Put papers and folders and stuff under so you don't ruin the table. And now you can just splash on the paint water and at this point I realized I should not be doing a tutorial because it finally cemented in me that I had no idea what I was doing. Anyway, my music that day was my anime playlist. You wanna play Guess the Song? Can you guess this one? Did you guess it? I didn't either. Turns out it was Unravel. I think. I still actually don't know. Here's a badly slowed down version. When one part is finally dry, it's time to paint the sleeves. So hey, look, it's night time. So the way I did the sleeves was, you know, put paper in between first, and then I painted one side and waited for it to dry, then do the other side. Aw, a bug! Oh, wait, I'm making the insect pillar! It's all coming together! This bug was meant to be- Oh, it crawled under. So if you zoom in enough, you can just barely see me working on the other sleeve. Also, don't forget the leg warmers. Cause I forgot the leg warmers. So now, when one side is dry, you can flip it over and do the same thing again. Then when it was dry, I don't know why I thought this would work, but I added extra water and painted the edge to try to ombre it. But as I already stated, I had no idea what I was doing. Also, the camera died at that exact part. Then here, I'm saying something about it being the next day, but I forgot to turn off the music so you can hear Lovejoy's one day in the background and I don't want to get copyrighted again. So yeah, it's green time and it's basically just the same as yesterday or last last week as of the time of this voiceover. Look at the sunlight, it's so pretty. So my music for that day was first i finally listened to lovejoy for the first time that day i repeated the album like three times and one day like five times can you tell i like one day i also re-listened to the black parade vessel i don't know how but they found me is 1981 something something album i can't remember the name of also the reason i did pink first was so that when i did green while it was drying i could work on drawing the spotty shape things on the bottom and gosh diddly darn look at that and i forgot the leg warmers again i did the same water thing with the green like i did for the pink as you can see here then i used plain on the flavor I mean, uncolored water and stuff to mix it all together and you know you got the best of both worlds. Now I bet you're wondering, what do I do with all this extra paint water? Well, 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 dear humans, the answer is quite simple. You drink it, of course. 
just kidding this is this is matcha i made it just so i could make this joke but it's not even that funny of a joke did i tell you about that one time i accidentally put a spoon in paint anyway next i use a permanent black fabric marker to outline the spots on the bottom and the sleeves then i laid the haori and leg pieces on the table to give myself some semblance of productivity then i watched the bunny girl senpai movie while using black textile paint to paint around the spots i did this inside at first but it was stinky so i went back outside again like look i'm wearing a mask because it was stinky hey humans so my friends and i are having our first movie night and we're finally gonna watch the demon sleeve your movie can you tell i'm excited can you tell huh can you tell i'm excited <laughs> Also, look, we have matching profile pics. One goal in life and aspiration has been reached. Next is to get over my fear of octopuses so I can finally watch Assassination Classroom. Movie night was so fun. I very enjoyed Mugen Train. We counted and Rengoku said delicious like 15 or 16 times in that scene, but please correct me if I'm wrong. I would be ruined if I went through life with misinformation on how many times Rengoku said delicious. I know through the power of editing, I could just technically skip to the end of the painting process, but I'm very bitter and I need you to know how gosh diddly hecking long this part took me. This clip right here is day two and I know it was only the second day, but I was already getting headaches, okay? I was in pain without the tea. Day 3, I was talking with my friends and their matching profile pics and then... Oh, butterfly, but now it's gone. Where is it? The stupid thing about that was that I missed the butterfly because I ran inside to get my phone and my camera was right next to me! On day 4, my friends and I were working on a plan to frame someone in our Minecraft server for possession of a legal substance. Also, by this time, the paint fumes no longer bothered me. I know that's a horrible sign of something, but if you couldn't tell, I was already unhealthily dedicated to Shinobu at this point. And I finally finished on day 5, so I decided to procrastinate- I mean, take a healthy break by watching a 4-hour iCarly analysis. And now, it's time to reminisce on the first two days of quarantine when I spent that time drawing the Nezuko fabric. Not this one, I just wanted an excuse to wear this cosplay. The other one, cause Mamma Mia, here we go again. By the way, I recently did get to watch Mamma Mia for the first time. I really like it. The blue erasable marker I used last time ran out of ink, so I got the idea to threaten politely ask my sister to borrow her doodle pony washable marker, and by golly, Mothman, it worked! So just like how I approach everything important in life, I wing the pattern with the erasable marker. Here's some reference picture- Wait, are you even planning on doing this after seeing how much work this takes? Only a person delusionally obsessed with the Demon Slayer Butterfly Girls would spend 7 out of 10 weeks of their summer vacation working on a costume of one of them. Can, can you imagine what loser would spend their summer doing that? What? Then I went over the lines with a permanent marker. Then I guess I got really sleepy halfway and brought the thing to bed with me because the next morning when I woke up, it was in my bed with me. Most people wake up next to their significant others or stuffed toys, but I wake up next to my unfinished sewing projects. But also stuffed toys. So yeah, I got up and continued working on the markering and it actually only took one afternoon for the rest of this, which is pretty cool. Holy heck, you are introduced humans, it's done! I mean, not completely done, you know, I still have to... But oh, after like four weeks of working on it, so many paint fumes, so many lost brain cells. Um, but we're not actually done. No, 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 dear humans. Um, leg warmers. Before we move on, I'd like to take this time to force you to look at these shots of the Haori looking cool. All right. Thank you for your time. So I got my garter elastigirl thing and cut two pieces the size of my chunky radish leg calf part and two the size of my ankles. Then I did the thing where you put a safety pin to the end and push the garter through the hole and pin it in place. The longer garter on top and the shorter one on the bottom. If you're having a hard time, I recommend using your Breath of Insect 6 form to get a bunch of ants to pull the garter through for you. I then folded it in half as you can see here and put it through the threader stabber or as some would call it, a sewing machine. Make sure the garter is also sewed in place and yeah, stretch it. That's what Carter do. Now flip your leggy warmers right side out. Then I realized as I was rewatching the Butterfly Mansion episodes of Demon Slayer that she- Wait, wait, I forgot to show you my Minecraft Butterfly Mansion! Here's the outside. I tried to make it accurate at first but then I got carried away. We don't talk about the scaffolding. Then I'm supposed to put flowers here like in this picture but I have a conflicting problem with perfectionism. Here's the training place with the cups and stuff. Here's the medical ward place. Here's the kitchen. Here's a memorial thing for Kanai. Here's the underground torture chambers. Here's Shinobu's fish tank. Here's a staircase. Here's a dining room. Here's the room that's supposed to be a lab but I'm procrastinating. Here's the back. Here's the cherry blossom tree from the manga. Here's where the coin toss scene happened. Here's where Kanao had her flashback. Here's a display of a bunch of things I spent too much time on. Those are some cool statues in the distance. Someone teach me how to decorate a garden. Here's Science Island and Ishigami Ville. Okay, sorry, that's a different anime. Anyway, when I was rewatching, I saw she has these cute bows in the back, so I got some ribbon. 
That's actually by a tape I couldn't find ribbon. And I just tied them into bows and sewed them onto the back and the Demon Slayer character design is just so beautiful. Sorry, yeah, you're done with the leg warmers. Hey, moral support my is back. Did you miss her? She lost a hand. So I got my uniform. It's a different one from the last video. It's a remake, but yeah. I know I used jogging pants in that video also, but now I have a different method. Why did I jump like that? So my mom gave me these... They're not funky, I was gonna call them funky. These pants, and I have soccer socks because they're the only black socks I own. I miss soccer. So I'm gonna put these... Y you know what these are. I'm gonna put them on my... <laughs> I'm gonna put them on my pants like this. Uh, I need like, you know, those fancy B-roll. Do I ever put B-roll footage? Now you may be thinking, those are kinda small. Won't that maybe cut off your circulation? Yeah. Now we got some floofy pants that you can't see. Gosh, the little leg warmers. And I'm gonna put them on like normal. Woo! <laughs> Look at the bows. You can't. Uh, you, you saw it at that time. <laughs> oh my gosh, now I go in. Oh, but how did you do the hair? Well, I didn't just stop at the Hori and leg warmers. You really think my obsession with Shinobu would only go as far as that? Ah, uh, mortals. Obviously, I need to feed my concerning the intense obsession with Shinobu the same way I did when I made an unhealthy amount of origami for Kanao. She has a katana and knife shoes. Also, I don't think my phone can handle exporting the video if I made it any longer, so... Yeah, part 2 with katana shoes and hair next week or whenever I finish editing that. So I just realized I didn't give you a good reveal of the cosplay, so here are some shots and oh, oh no, I'm, I'm outside. Is, is that the katana? It's spoiling the next video. It's a disaster. Oh no, mamma mia. Oh, I look like Shinobu. That's so cool. That's the point.